Miles Davis, Blue and Green. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, the tiny Indian Ocean state of Maldives remains in a state of political turmoil seven weeks after the country's first democratically elected president, Mohammed Nasheed, was ousted in what he has described as a coup at gunpoint. In 2008, Mohammed Nasheed beat the longtime ruler of Maldives, Mamoun Abdul Gayoum, in the country's first free and open election. Prior to the vote, Nasheed was a longtime pro democracy activist who was jailed for six years. At the time, he was described as the Mandela of the Maldives. Nasheed now insists the February 7th coup was led by supporters of the former dictator. The coup became news across the globe, in part because Nasheed has become an internationally recognized leader on climate issues, as he urged the world to do more to save small island states from rising seawaters. Ousted Maldives President Mohammed Nasheed once held a cabinet meeting underwater to highlight the threat of global warming to the Maldives. He also pledged to make the Maldives the first carbon-neutral country and installed solar panels on the roof of his presidential residence. President Nasheed's rise to power and climate activism is the focus of a new documentary called The Island Presidents. It's just opened at the Film Forum here in New York. This is an excerpt. If we can't stop, the sea is rising. If you allow for a two-degree rise in temperature, you are actually agreeing to kill us. I have an objective, which is to save a nation. I know it's a huge task. I've been arrested 12 times. I've been tortured twice. I spent 18 months in solitary. We won our battle for democracy in the Maldives. A year later, there are those who tell us that solving climate change is impossible. Well, I am here to tell you that we refuse to give up hope. Mohammed Nasheed, the ousted president of the Maldives, joining us here in studio in New York. Also with us, John Schenk, the director of this new documentary called The Island President. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, president Nasheed, I last saw you um, at the U.N. summit on climate change. That is where you have become famous around the world. Um, but talk about what happened, uh, the date, the time, and what took place in your country, in the Maldives, that led you, your forced departure from the presidency. Well, uh, thank you very much and good morning. Um, as, as you know, um, in 2008, we had our first multi-party elections. Um, I was fortunate to be elected then. Um, and we were able to beat President Gayoum, who has been in power for the last 30 years then. Um, it's one of the things that we are now coming to understand is it's easy uh, to beat a, a dictator, but it's not so much easy to get rid of a dictatorship. Um, the networks, the intricacies, um, the institutions, and everything that the dictatorship has established remains, even after the elections. Uh, on the February 6th, on the February 7th, rather, on the 6th, on the night of the 6th, um, I asked the military to restrain uh, 200 uh, riot police um, who were rebelling. Um, this 200 riot police has been, they were established in 2005, um, specifically to um, disrupt uh, the peaceful demonstrations of the Maldivian Democratic Party at the time. When we came into government, uh, we, in a sense, filed them, or rather we stopped using them, and we had them scattered across uh, the islands, um, in, uh, in other islands as well, um, because we had no use to use so much force. Uh, but um, unknowing to me, um, uh, um, they were the opposition, or rather the, the, the dictatorship and the elements connected to it, uh, were talking to these people. And on the 7th, um, they staged a rebellion, uh, and they uh, were sitting on the, um, they were sitting, they were protesting on the Republican Square, and I asked the military to restrain them. Um, I, I asked them at uh, 11 um, in the evening that day, 
by five in the morning the next day, um, the military was the military still hadn't done that. So I went to the military headquarters, um, and then there I found that sections of the military had also joined with the rebellion, and they were refusing to uh, restrain the police. Uh, then um, around early that morning, uh, about uh, nine nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, the generals started asking me to resign, and they told me that if I did not resign, they would resort to using arms. They would use arms on me, and they would also use arms on the people. Uh, then uh, I had no choice, really, because uh, the uh, sections of the uh, military who were in the headquarters uh, were with the rebellious police, and also I saw um, more than 100 uh, other soldiers coming from uh, the other barracks in Mali, and also another 100 soldiers coming from another barracks near, near Mali. And so at the end of the day, it was about 500 um, soldiers and policemen against uh, about 100 or so soldiers who were loyal to the government and to the constitution. And, and the reaction of, the, uh, of others in your government and the one who then— uh assumed the presidency? <laughs> well, uh, the, the, the vice president assumed the presidency, but the vice president had been, um, we understand now, talking to them um, uh, throughout the, the month before that. And they had these understandings that after uh, my forced resignation, um, uh, the vice president would take over. Um, and then uh, to seemingly make it look like a usual resignation and for him to take over. But after I was forced to resign and after the announcement of my resignation, again, I was in Comunicado for um, more than 24 hours. Um, I was only able to uh, get in touch with the British High Commissioner uh, round about evening that night. Then again, it was not me, it was my secretary. Uh, the British High Commissioner rang uh, my secretary and wanted to speak to me. Um, I told my secretary that I'm surrounded by the police in, my, in the presidential residence. They were really sacking the residence and going through every, all of my personal belongings and, and so on. So I said, I can't speak. Um, that was the only telephone conversation or only message that I was able to uh, uh, bring to the outside. Um, otherwise, I, I, had, I, I, was, I, uh, I was there in the presidential residence, but then at that, at, um, at later that night, um, I still had some loyal um, soldiers who were there. Um, so with their help, I was able to slip out from the president's residence and go to my um, family home. Um, as soon as I went home, I almost fell because I hadn't slept for two nights by then, by this time, and I've been very, very abused and, and pushed around and bruised. So I slept that night. The next morning, I spoke to our party members, and we decided that we should go out on the streets and tell the people that this is not on, and here is a coup in every sense. And uh, we would want to, uh, we would want reinstatement, and we would want investigations uh, into the coup. At uh, this time, uh, I wanted to play what the Obama administration was saying in the midst of this coup, um, with the coup in the Maldives. Uh, within a day of your ouster, the State Department here in the United States defended the ouster and confirmed the new leadership had been in contact with the Obama administration. This is State Department spokesperson Victoria Nuland, who was questioned in February about the U.S. stance and diplomat Robert Blake's visit. Are you going to uh, withhold, or I mean, are you, are, you, are you taking any position on the suggestions that it might have been a military coup? Are you going to investigate that? Is Blake going to check that out? Or do you think that that's not a, a, a sort of a reasonable suggestion here? Well, obviously, we're, we are talking to all parties. That's why we're sending our folks down. But that is not the information that we have at the moment. But uh, Assistant Ser Secretary Blake will have a chance to uh, be there and talk to everybody on Saturday. But in the interim, <coughs> we are urging calm. We're urging dialogue. We're urging uh, the uh, President Wahid, as you know, has committed to forming a national unity government. And we think that will also be an important signal. Uh, to uh, political factions across the Maldives. Well, does that together. mean that a determination on whether this was an unconstitutional change in, uh, in power is going to wait until after Blake's visit? 
Well, our view uh, as of yesterday, and I don't think that that has changed, uh, obviously we'll collect more information going forward, was that this was handled constitutionally. So that was Victoria Nuland, the State Department spokesperson, saying that the coup was constitutional already, talking about the new president, who was the vice president, Wahid. Uh, uh, president Nasheed, what is your response? Uh, well, uh, it was really shocking and deeply disturbing uh, that the United States government um, so instantly recognized um, the former dictatorship coming back again. Um, we were hoping that they would look into the facts and understand what was happening on the ground. And, and we would still hope that they, they look into it and, and urge um, the dictator or urge Dr. Wahid, the former vice president, to resign and therefore to allow for fresh elections in the Maldives. We have to have democracy back on track in the Maldives. It's very young. It's a very young democracy. We only were able to have our first multi-party elections in 2008, and it was only three years down the line, and suddenly uh, there was a very very well planned uh, coup, and um, Dr. Wahid has been installed as a facade, and Gayoum is back. Uh, um, uh, we were shocked uh, that the United States um, acted so swiftly um, in recognizing the new regime. Um, especially disturbing was all throughout our last three years, we worked very closely with American ideals. Uh, with democracy. Uh, we wanted to have better relations with Israel. Uh, we wanted to have a more moderate um, uh, Islamic country in the Maldives. And we've been fighting for all the civil liberties and all the human rights, fundamental rights of the people. And therefore, it's deeply, deeply disturbing that your government has not been able to understand what was happening in the Maldives. Well, what's even more disturbing is that we've seen this script so many times now in recent years, whether it's in Haiti with President Aristide or in Honduras with Manuel Zelaya or with Chavez in, in Venezuela, the, uh, the U.S. government seems always to jump in uh, immediately as the coup is occurring to support the coup plotters rather than the legally elected uh, uh, the uh, officials. And, and so, I, on the one hand, I understand your shock, uh, but on the other hand, it's, it's amazing how it keeps happening and no one seems to say anything about it here in this country. But I'd like to ask John Schenck, you had uh, unparalleled access uh, to uh, President Nasheed's administration in terms of being able to chronicle and document what it is that he was trying to do. And uh, if you could talk about the film and how you managed to get that access. Yeah, well, The Island President, as far as I know, is just a, is a unique uh, documentary. It's the, really the, the first ever documentary that gets kind of no-holds-barred access to a sitting head of state. And, you know, now, sitting, uh, you know, weeks after this, this coup occurred in the Maldives, I have to think back of, you know, uh, on the film as really an example and proof of, of, of President Nasheed's um, uh, penchant and desire to have transparency in government. And, you know, uh, you know the, the Maldives had a dictatorship for 30 years, and, it was, and the type of press that would come out of that dictatorship was highly controlled by a state-run television, um, you know, that was the only station in the country. With programming that was, you know, you know, you know, sort of uh, only blessed by the the president himself, and then as soon as Nasheed stepped into office, there's instantly several independent television stations. The state-run uh, media was was privatized and and made independent, and uh, you know, th this film is really just an example of what can happen when you know, there truly is a commitment to transparency. And the camera went to places that you know cameras have not gone before. It, not only to his strategy meetings and behind-the-scenes sessions, but also to bilateral meetings in the international climate debate, which is just, you know, fascinating and, and highly dramatic. Um, the film is playing, played at the Film Forum last night, going national around the country. Is it there this weekend at the Film yeah, Forum? Yeah, it started at the Film Forum last night. We had uh, sold-out crowds, and it's opening in San Francisco tomorrow, in L.A. next week, Washington, D.C., et cetera. Uh, President Nasheed, in this part of the conversation, we're going to continue it um, and post it online at democracynow.org. Your final comments about the importance of climate change and why you think it is that you were ousted. Um. Climate change um, is a real issue, and it is happening now. It's not something in the future. 
Um, if you um, from John's film, you would be able to see how precarious and how vulnerable the Maldives is. Any imbalance to nature will have very, very huge impacts on the low-lying Maldive islands. And not just simply the Maldive islands, but also all coastal regions around the world. I think about a third of the uh, population of the world lives on coastal areas, and they will be seriously challenged if we are unable to do something about climate change um, in the next few years. Um, we feel that we have to advocate, that we have to try and get the message um, across that there has to be a uh, better uh, understanding and international agreement on reducing carbon emissions. Uh, President Mohammed Nasheed, John Shank, want to thank you for being with us. We will continue our conversation and post online at democracynow.org. On tomorrow's show, we'll play the legendary poet, essay at feminist. Adrienne Rich will post her words online at democracynow.org.